Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Colby. I'm a psychiatrist in London. Today, I've got my friends Paul and Shig with me who have had problems with alcohol. And we're going to talk about alcohol itself and the problems it can cause. And then we're going to talk about SP Bespoke Wellbeing Solutions, which Paul and Shig run to help people who have got alcohol problems because they don't want other people to go through what they've been through. First of all, Shig, can you tell me a little bit about your story? Yes, of course. I was born in Leicester um, with two sisters and a brother. From an early, early age, um, all I can remember is a lot of trauma back then in them days. And I can also now, looking back at it, saying we had some great times as well, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I picked up a drink at 13 years old, but it just made me feel good. It made me... I don't know, it made me feel so less anxious, if you like. And, um, but I enjoyed it. But what it did to me was it changed my personality immediately because I was pretty good at school and I went to school quite regularly, no problems at all. But now I like going out with my friends and to the park or to the allotments in them days and having a sneaky can of beer and a cigarette. And it sort of went from there. So education wise went out the window for me, I'm afraid. And then when I reached, um, when I left school, I got a job in a garage and I was working in a garage. And um, again, it wasn't too bad to start with, but then I can see my drinking get into an everyday drinking park because every time I finish work, you go for a drink. Basically what happened was I had a daughter not so long after that where who I've not seen for 28 years um, because of the consequence of my drinking. And, and basically I wanted to put that in there because one of the things that, I find is when we're helping people that, you know, one of the questions that we ask is, has it cost you more than money? Has your drinking or the drug use has cost you more than money? And the answer to that is if they reply, yes, we know there's something going on there. And what I mean by that is, have you lost your job for your drinking? You know, is it affecting your friendships? Is it affecting your marriage, your, your relationship with your children? Um, you know, drink driving and all these things. And the reason I'm saying that was because I got done for drink driving three times. Still didn't think I had a problem. I, I managed to start my first business at 21 and got very successful. I had three businesses in the UK and their company in California. But I didn't think that I had a problem. And it's not till you look back on your life that you can see where it went wrong. At the time, you're okay. A lot of people said you drink too much. A lot of people says, look, you've got to curtail this. But the fact is, I only drank at night. And because I drank at night, I thought, well, I can't, you know, I'm a heavy drinker, but I'm stressed, you know. And every time I drank, it took that stress away, it took that anxiety away. It made me feel relaxed. So that was a pattern of my drinking actually for many years. The problem was it was doing a lot of damage in the background, which I wasn't looking at. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I've got into my head that alcoholics or people who drink too much, people on the park bench or people who haven't got a job or people whose lives are ruined. And my mine at that particular time was doing okay. I was running businesses and, you know, so how can I be? You know, I don't drink all day, every day. I drink at night. And so that was my perception. I, I diagnosed myself and I also diagnosed everybody else who were uh, alcoholics at the time. You know, this is, I'm not a problem drinker. But it did get worse and worse. And, it, you know, eventually it did cost me my marriage. It did cost me bankruptcy with all my businesses. At 46 years old, I found myself living in my, on my own in a flat without my flashcards, without my big house and everything divorced, um, the children weren't very happy to see me. You know, that relationship is really going down the pan because I was drinking too much. And I tried to commit suicide. That, that was the key to this. I tried to commit suicide because I couldn't see my life. I've had everything. I've had the best holiday, I've had the best cars, I've got everything, and now I've got nothing. So everybody would be better off without me anyway. And that's what I assumed. And so I tried to drink myself to death. It didn't work. I ended up with a wet brain, which is what Paul is, knows a big word for this one, is it Paul? Vernicus Corsicopsin. Right, and that left me unable to walk, talk, read, write, and with a childlike behavior for a while, which they didn't think I'd survive that, but I did, thank God. 
and I don't know how, but I managed to get right. And then when I got right, I managed to start looking at um, my drinking problem and what was going on. So I joined an organization and they sort of explained to me about what was going on and my drinking and what effects it's doing and the problem I had. And what I didn't realize, what I do now, is that it doesn't matter whether you drink all day. It doesn't matter whether you drink every two weeks or drink every three months. If it's costing you more than money and it's a problem, and when you're starting, you can't stop, or when you're starting, you need more of it, or you can't live without it, it's a problem. And what I didn't realize, what I do now, now know, is that it was my mindset. I had to change the way I, my outlook on life was. And it took a lot of work for me to do that, but I come through it. Yeah. I realized that um, I'd gone wrong in a lot of ways. I realized my thinking was wrong in a lot of ways. And um, I sit here today at 60 years old with nearly 14 and a half years sobriety. I've not had a drink for 14 and a half years. And from a guy that wanted to kill himself to a guy that is now gave his daughter away when she got married a few years ago, I've got three lovely grandchildren from five years old to just over a week old. And so all these things that I couldn't see at that time are now there. So what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to say is to give people hope and say there's a life after this. It's a fantastic life after this and a great life after this. So that's what you get when you get well. I can explain to you how we work afterwards, but... I just want to bring Paul in so you can have a bit of background about Paul. Thanks, Shiggs. Thank you, Beth. Um, I suppose my story is factually different from Shiggs, but there are, there are certain commonalities in them. I'm the youngest of four and the product of stiff upper lip World War II parents. There was never any alcohol um, in my family. It was never prevalent. Um, my parents are no longer with us, and I still have a very good, close relationship with all of my siblings. I had an unremarkable childhood, nothing much bad happened at school, no bullying or anything like that. Became a student, full-time student, and of course Friday night for students is a student's union bar. Still not a problem. I married uh, and had uh, my son uh, about 30 years ago. At the same time, I qualified as a solicitor. And I found it to be not an easy job, and it's a stressful job, and it's a worrying job. So to begin with, the bottle of wine and the four tins of beer, which would last a week, gradually over the years, and it was slowly over the years, um, that became increased. Because, of course, what happens if you drink on a very regular basis, your body becomes tolerant to it. And you need more to get the same effect that it gave you in the first place, which superficially is a good effect. And then as the years went by, uh, more children, mortgages, all of the usual day-to-day -day stuff in life, and the stresses and strains were such whereby, if I fast forward, in the end, I was a 24-7 drinker. And what that means is, um, if I didn't have a drinking man, I was unconscious. And when I say unconscious, I don't mean asleep. I mean unconscious, and a little bit like she, my health suffered. I've been hospitalized uh, twice with pancreatitis. I remember the consultant saying to me um, that there's a chap in the ward next door dying with what you've got, and that was no amount of deterrent. I remember going into hospital for the second time, and the alcohol counselor came round and told me to change my brand and not drink before a certain hour of the day. Uh, and it struck me that very much here was a rational person speaking to a an irrational person uh, in the bed. It reached a rock bottom. And in 2013, uh, I went into a rehabilitation centre and that was, um, that was uh, good. It was necessary. OK, so Paul went into rehab. Um, Shig, yeah, can you no tell me? what you do to help people. You've said that you don't want what happened to you to happen to other people, and you want them to basically get them before they get to the stage that you were at with losing your family, your job, you know, absolutely everything and your health. So what do you do to try and convince people that they need well, help? Well, 
My answer to that is if I got, um, had a pound from everybody who tells me they're not ready yet or their family members are not ready yet, I'd be a multimillionaire today because they're waiting for people to say they're ready. They're waiting for people to say, I give up, I'm going to drink. Yeah. They're not going to yeah. do it. They're not going to do it. And I look back at my life now and if I can get back to the days when I was really drinking too much and it was getting out of hand and people kept saying, go into a rehab or go and get some help or... I wasn't going to do that. I was yeah. too fearful. I needed what, the next drink. What were you afraid of? Afraid of stopping drinking. Yeah. How am I going to stop? Yeah. How are you fearful pay? of when you you know, what I needed was somebody to grab hold of me and do it for me. Don't give me a choice. It's mm -hmm. got to be done. Right. Because the fact of the matter is, I was never going to just say yes brilliant i've got a problem i'll go yeah and we are trying to stop people from going down the scale of mine and Paul's stories we don't want you to get done for drink driving at all we don't want you to get divorced we don't want your family to fall apart we don't want you to lose your job we don't want any of this to happen yeah but as soon as the drinking gets out of hand it's a lot easier to stop drinking when you're not gone down that scale yeah when you're not got that far down so what we're trying to do is to stop that mountain building up yeah and paul i think can explain it better than i can as yeah. to how sp really um took off which is about four years ago about a good two and a half years of planning yeah but it was yeah. a conversation that me and paul had so i'll just pass it over to paul Hi there. Uh, it really was as simple as this. Um, we were having um, a cup of coffee uh, one day in a coffee bar, and Shug and I have been friends for many years now, known each other many, many years. And I just must have said, well, you show me somebody with a drink problem who doesn't have a family problem or a work problem that then transforms into a legal problem. That's probably quite a rare creature. And certainly in the days of practicing law, uh, all I could do was perform my brief, uh, talk about the rules and the regulations, the rights and the wrongs and the like. But these days, what we tend to say is, well, we've been where you are. Yeah. And we yeah. can show you a way out because we have come out the other side. And so with sobriety first, we can actually dismantle that unassailable brick wall that people face that they can't see a way over or around. Yeah. It really is as simple as that. Most legal problems have a natural shelf life. There is a process to, to be undertaken and provided it's dealt with sensitively and provided it's dealt with in the right way with compassion, that shouldn't in itself be a problem to keep propelling the problem and keep drinking, 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 because once the descent starts, it only goes one way. Yeah. So then you, you said to Shik that show me somebody with alcohol and they're definitely going to have some form of legal problem so how did it lead from that to sp bespoke well uh, from a, a blank canvas we thought how can we set up a business which is reliable engenders trust polished and professional we're not clinicians uh, but we have team members who are yeah. Uh, we certainly um, are not quacks. We are expert by experience, not examination. Yeah. And really what we then did, we created a website, www.spbespoke.com. We have uh, networked with a lot of fellow care and professionals so we can provide a holistic service because as she alluded to, generally speaking, drinking or, or uh, any drug of choice is only the symptom of the problem. Yeah. Generally speaking, there might be a life-changing event from years gone by, or just life stresses and strains that most professional people, most entrepreneurs, uh, most managers and the like, all suffer, yeah. all suffer from. And for the person who is very stressed at work, he will come home or she will come home, and it doesn't discriminate. And then the families become affected by it. The children may say, you don't take us fishing anymore, or why did you miss the parents' evening? Or the wife may say, well, you don't do this uh, anymore. Or the husband may say, we don't do this anymore. Uh, and really, what we want to say is there is a way out. There is a way to repair 
the hurt, there is a way to actually keep those families together to put the primary sufferer and the secondary sufferers on a better platform for a healthier way of living and a happier life. Um, so Shig said that what you try and do is convince somebody <laughs> that they need help now rather than wait till it's too late yeah. so Basically, how do you do that go, okay number one this this um video we're doing is aimed really at families yeah families and friends not to the person who's suffering right okay because the person who's suffering is in denial they don't yeah. want to stop they don't know how to stop they don't even think they've got a problem so what we're trying to do is trying to convince families and loved ones to say, look, you've got to intervene. You've got to intervene before it's too late. The, the, the wife or the husband wants a partner back how they used to be. Yeah. Not, when not the way they are now. So do the children. So do the loved ones. And by the time that person stops drinking or whatever, it's too late. The chances are that it would have cost a divorce, it would have cost their child access, it would have, it would have cost something. So we're trying to prevent all that. We're trying to say it doesn't have to be that way. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a massive thing of intervention. I can't mention that word enough. Now, yeah. Paul went into two rehabs, as you know, and, you know, we, we, we will not um, criticise any rehabs and we won't criticise, criticise any organisation. We can only tell you how we do it and what we find works. Yeah. And the reason yeah. we find the SP Bespoke Solutions work is because we actually work in your own homes. Okay. So you're in your own environment. You're not going somewhere, putting a bubble and coming back out again and then having to live life how you how you how yeah with the before. same problems again yeah the same problem. now the family i'm afraid they're still left with all their issues because they they also start suffering with codependency emotional blackmail enabling all these things they're suffering with and they need yeah. help so we not only help the client who's drinking we help the family we talk yeah. to the whole family and we work with the whole family and we do an intense program with them we don't stay in people's homes we actually stay in hotels okay but we go there first thing in the morning and we're there till as much as long as we can be and we're working on the whole lot of them the family as well as uh, the client so yeah. we're trying to get everybody singing from the same song sheet and understanding where the triggers are understanding what it's all about yeah and educating them and and Paul, you know, he's amazing because the bespoke side of this business is that he's the legal side. Yeah. He knows yeah. all the legal stuff. So families, by the time we get called in, they might be losing their job. So Paul takes care of that. He looks yeah. at that and says, look, we'll, we'll take care of this. They might be having massive problems with their disputes with mortgage or the, or the finances. Yeah. There might be, it might be too late where they're going for a divorce or someone's fighting for child access or any of these things, Paul can take care of them. Yeah. And every time somebody says stop drinking, well, I've got this divorce yeah. coming up. I've got my bankruptcy. Yeah. So he takes care of that. Mm. So he sort of says, right, give me that. I'll take care of that bit. And then we start working with the family. And the reason we say that we do an intense program is we have got team members lined up who will go to people's homes with us who are skilled in their mindset. So we've yeah. got gamblers, we've got drug addicts, people who have been there, sorry. And people who are skilled, actually, they've got the badges after them. We've got psychologists, we've got people who know all about child abuse, sexual abuse. Well, we've got the whole lot covered, really. So it doesn't matter what you've been through. So once we start picking up why you were drinking or what the problems were, what you've been through, yeah. we've got a team who is skilled in that particular area. Well, that's so, good because, because you're not just taking away the problems that they've come across due to drinking. You're looking at yes. what's actually caused the drinking. So what you're yes. saying is your team, they've all had something in the past. Yes. Um, yes. But they're now all professional and they've been trained in their yes. field as well. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. And it's so important to have that because you've got to put all your skills 
in, you've got to look at what people are suffering with, and we don't know that because everybody is an individual. Yeah. So that, and then the, the big important thing for us is the aftercare. So yeah. when we are finished, we will then make sure that the family has a aftercare, which means yeah. that they will still have access to somebody talking to the family itself or the family members who have been suffering for yeah. God knows how many years. Yeah. So that will keep them topped up so they're okay. And for the client himself, that he will or she will get passed over to another counsellor who will then take on board what we've done and start looking at that and working on the things that we found. Yeah. Because this yeah. is not a cheap service. So they're not going to be able to afford our service on a long-term basis. But once we do the intervention, which is anywhere from five to ten days, depending on if they need detoxing. Because if right, they so need who would organise the detox then? Is that through the GP or how do... that? No, our team members. We've got professional nurses that we will bring in to do the detox if we need medical help, if we yeah. need medical assistance. So yeah. that's all taken care of. So it depends on how the situation is. So we do a 20 minute free telephone consultation to anybody. Yeah. They will then have a chat with us and we will get to know a little bit about them. We don't clock watch and we will see if we can help them or not. That's the number yeah. one thing. Yeah. Number two thing is we will then make an appointment to go and see them and do yeah. an assessment, which is we go to their homes anywhere in the country Okay. And we will sit there with the family for an hour and a half, two hours. Well, we don't clock watch. With that assessment, we're trying to look at the safeguarding issues that are in the house because we've got to be there and our team members. We've got to look at the past. We've got to look at where they are and how bad they are, whether they need detoxing or whether they don't, whether they, you know, whether they need um, legal aspects of work doing if they don't. All these are the things that we have to look at. Then what we do, we put a plan of action in, which will say, right, it's all drawn up. We tell them what we're going to do with them. It's all put in writing. Yeah. And we say, right, we're going to get involved. And it's an immediate service. Yeah. There's no waiting times. So yeah. we get involved immediately. Hotel's booked, in we go. Whatever team members we, we need, we will know because we've already done the assessment. And so we'll bring them particular team members in. Now, when you say hotels, but that's because you're traveling and you need to stay in a hotel, but the actual yes. work's done where the person is in their home. Yes, but you have to be in the house to get a feel for what their real life is about, what their yeah. daily lives are yeah. like, their work life, their, their, their family life, being parents or whatever. It's fantastic how it works. Yeah. It's a real holistic wraparound service, doing with a lot of love, doing with a lot of passion because we really care. Yeah. SPB spoke is not about getting people well. Everybody can get well. We can all go down to the doctors and have a plaster put on. Right. SPB spoke yeah. is about staying well. Okay. So yeah. It's get well, stay well. So and it's not just a to... quick fix, like, you know, get That's people right. dry. Yeah. You know, it's looking at yeah. all the causes and the yes. after effects. Yes. Yeah. And when we leave, they have free telephone calls to us and Skype as well. Yeah. So yeah. we keep in touch. We want to make sure they're doing okay. If they've got any problems, they want to run through us, it's free because we will be talking to them on the phone. And Tell me one to... thing, Shig. One thing I don't yes. get is normally I've always been told you can't help somebody unless they want to help themselves. And you say yeah. that it's been the relative, the husband or wife or the friend who have contacted you. How do you, when the, somebody opens the door and you see the person who everybody else thinks has got the problem, what do you do with that person? Do they throw you out or are they willing that, to see you? How do you turn that well, around? It's, it's a very good question. And people are not pleased to see us. Okay. That is the answer to the question because they, they don't think they've got a problem. They don't yeah. think it's that bad. Right. But by the time we have spoke to them through the door, and we did this through the door with one chap, right? within 10 minutes, we'd open the door. Yeah. And within an hour, we were having a fantastic conversation with him, and we helped him. Yeah. Because once they've been caught out, and they know. Right. You see, our first question is, if there's not a problem and nothing's going wrong, why are we here? Yeah. 
Yeah. Why are we here? come here because the worry and the so and we never pressure anybody so what we say to that person is look just talk to us yeah just talk to us if you feel like you've got no problem when we're finished talking that's fine we will go yeah we'll go yeah but you talk to us yeah and we've never yet where that person says sorry i've not got a problem Mm. for a simple reason we run through what's been going on Mm. what's been going on in his life or her life why we've been called in, the worry that, you know, that the loved one's been through. It yeah. will cost you your marriage. But you are aware that your husband or wife is going to look at divorcing you. Yeah. You are aware that the children don't want to see you. So is this really what you want or would you like us to step in and sort this out for you? Yeah. And, and it goes back to what I was saying before. You need somebody to grab you by the throat and say, you haven't got a choice. Yeah, yeah. You haven't got a choice because this is a killer illness. Yeah. This is a killer illness. It kills. I've been to a lot of funerals. So we, and it doesn't matter about how far down the scale you've gone. We would love to get involved, and we have helped a 21-year-old lad, by the way. Yeah. It was a pleasure to see his mum yeah. happy again. Yeah. And it was a pleasure to see the whole family back together again and they're doing great. And he's he's got an apprenticeship and he's working. Yeah. And he's got his, his life back on track again. Yeah. Chick, you mentioned that you've been to funerals. Is that of people who've deliberately taken their own lives no, throughout? No. Alcoholic deaths can be... Um, choking on your own vomit mm. when you're asleep. You yeah. didn't deliberately do that. Alcoholic poison, you didn't deliberately do that. Falling down the stairs, you didn't do that deliberately. Yeah. Um, going to have a bath and falling straight into the bath and banging your head against the taps and cracking your head open and drowning. Didn't deliberately do that. The, the, these things are accidental deaths, but they're yeah. alcohol related. Yeah. The only thing is, on the big news, you'll only see it where someone's dying with the liver, cirrhosis of the liver in hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Very far and few between. They really are. Alcoholic deaths are just normal things. Just walking across the road, didn't see that bus or car. Drink driving, you know, won't happen to me. I'm okay. I've not had too much. And wrap it around a tree. Hmm. All these things are real stories. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, but they are alcohol related deaths. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You know, and ha- do I have I been to funerals where people have? Yes, of course I have. I've been to a yeah. funeral where somebody hung himself. You know, yeah. it, it happens. So we don't want that to happen. We're trying yeah. to save lives. We're trying to save families. Where possible, because Paul's a trained mediator as well, by the way, not just okay. solicitor. Yeah. We try to keep families together and yeah. not break them apart. It's basically... A wraparound service is short term, five to ten days, depending on how bad people are. Cost depends on how many team members we have to bring in, if they need medical detox, if they don't. And then we will push them onto a counsellor in their area who yeah. we will personally know, and, and we will personally know that person to take over and carry on with the good work. And even yeah. if they see them once a month, it's keeping up that because it's going to be. A long-term thing but we will put them in a place where they've got a toolbox mm. thinking um where they're happy and by the time me and paul are finished they've got no legal consequences going on anywhere they've got no work problems going on anywhere and the people in the house are actually interacting with each other understanding each other and loving yeah. each other yeah well that sounds great Shig um I think what I've got away from talking with you and Paul is that your aim is to stop people losing their jobs their wives or husbands um everything they've got um although you can help them even after that and it's good that you said you actually lost everything but now you're having a great life and yes, thankfully yes, you've yes, reconciled yes. your good yes, friends yes. with your wife now. You've reconciled with some of your children. You're a granddad. Obviously, yes, yes. you don't yes, even yes. want to drink and you're having a yes, good yes. life. Um, yes. The other thing that I've taken from this, which I think is more important, is that people don't have to get 
to where they feel they can't get any worse to try yes. and get help because yes. Yes. people yes. around them yes. if they feel that that person needs help your the service reason. are able to actually go in there even if it's through the door or get in the house and have a chat and actually because you've been there the person yes. can't like wiggle out of their problems yes. um, because yes. you should say well you know your wife your husband have called us why do they think you've got a problem yes. or if somebody yes. gives excuses oh i used to have that excuse you know so you can sort of convince them that actually they do need help and once yes. you've actually spent that time with them then they'll open up and want help yes yes it's not cheap we don't aim to be cheap, yeah. but we provide a service that's on a personal level. We yeah. provide a service that we cover all the angles and the legal side, as well as the holistic side, as well as the counselling side, and as well as the trauma side. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. what I like is, is that you don't just go in there and sort out all the legal problems or whatever. It's the relationships between the families. Yes, massive. That's, that's so they are involved. And then That's the other really thing is you've got to look at the reasons why, background reasons why somebody yes. might start investing. Yes. And that's a long term yes. help yes. locally. Yes. So you're not just yes. going in there for five to 10 days, that's it. You, you've got exactly. that longer term. And that's also you said that they can pick up the phone and contact yes. you. So you're not just doing what you do and that's it. Yes, and, and yeah. it, that's why we put get well and stay well. That's what yeah. SPB spoke is all about, get well, stay well. And, it's, and, and it doesn't have to be abstinence, by the way. And this is why we don't label people as alcoholics or drug addicts. You yeah. know, some people drink because they've had a trauma in their lives. Yeah. They've had a death in the family or anything like that. And, and they've just got to a point where they've used that as a medicine and got stuck in that cycle. So yeah. everybody's different. So we don't just say abstinence and that's it. What we say is we will tell you what we've picked up on this. Yeah. You and your family will decide whether you're actually an alcoholic or you're just somebody who got stuck in that cycle. Yeah. So we don't want yeah. to scare people and say, right, this is all about, you know, no. But you need to have a break from whatever medicine you're taking for a period of time to understand what you are and who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. That's been really interesting. What I'm going to do is put your website address underneath the video and the phone number so people can access you straight away. Yes. Yeah. One thing I've noticed, Chicken Paul, which is quite interesting, we're, we're talking about alcohol and the problems it, it's caused you both. Um, but just looking, looking behind you, there's a cabinet full of wine glasses can you tell me what's going on yes yeah that, that that's from days gone by we don't demonize alcohol okay we don't demonize the people that drink it that is simply not a problem for anybody in this household now and in fact i'm glad you mentioned it because it didn't cross my mind um and i can't remember the last time i opened that cabinet the, yeah. the fact is Beth, if, if you're going to get people well and the first time they're going to a supermarket or they're going to um, a petrol station, there's drink everywhere. Yes. What we get to a point is they don't want that drink. Yeah. They're not interested in that drink. Great. Well, thanks very much. That's been very interesting. And I hope it will be really useful for pe people who view it. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. And um, thank you for taking your time. And thank you for asking us um, to do this interview with you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.